you're not dumb dumb, but you're a little dumb because you're giving all your precious energy and effort into a man who texts you on demon time, ghosts you every other weekend, takes you to his house as a date, texts you five minutes before he's about to pick you up that he can't make it anymore, and follows every OnlyFans IG model. But I'm gonna make damn sure that that changes. Consider this video the wake-up call you need that is going to change the way that you date, what kind of men you attract, and how you're going to thrive in dating and relationships from this moment on. In this video, I am going to offer an alternative as to why you are not having luck in dating that isn't all men are trash, men need to stop acting like toddlers, and men are just intimidated by you. The theme of this video is masculine and feminine energy and how this beautiful synergy of energies is going to transform your love life. This video is quite literally the cheat code into attracting high value men who are going to treat you like the goddess you are without asking asking for it. This is the breakdown of today's video. These are the chapter cards. Now a huge disclaimer, the things I'm about to mention in this video are things that need to be in place before getting into a relationship with a man in order for him to treat you like a princess. If he is not treating you like a princess, I need you to consider two things. The first is, does this man have the prerequisites for what it takes to be in his healthy masculine, provide princess treatment to me, and want to literally give me the world? I'll go over the prerequisites a little bit later. And the second thing to consider is, is, is my feminine energy inspiring his masculine energy? So the first thing that you really need to understand is that some men are just not wired the way that I'm going to explain a high value masculine man to be. Some men just do not have the capacity to want to take care of a woman, nor do they feel fulfilled in doing so. High value masculine men feel a great sense of pride within themselves. They get overly joyous and content by knowing they are taking care of the women in their lives. Mothers, sisters, their girlfriends, and eventually their wives. Some men do not have this trait. Some men do not want this role and they are good being a 50-50 partner. They're good being in the feminine role and they want to be in receiving mode. Some men just enter relationships in receiving mode, which attracts the masculine woman. But in this video, we are talking about masculine and feminine energy dynamic where the male is embodying his dominant masculine energy and the female is embodying her dominant feminine energy. It's so important that you notice the signs of a man who is in his feminine energy and his 50-50 vibes in his receiving mode very early on so that you don't get stuck in a relationship with a man who is never going to step up, is never going to be in his masculine energy, is never going to give you princess treatment, but now you're emotionally invested in this man so you feel like you can't leave. You feel very stuck in the relationship, you feel very attached to this man, and now you're in this like, oh my god, I want all these things, but I want it from this man. This man is never going to give it to you. So the earlier you spot the signs of a man who is not going to be able to give you this relationship dynamic ever, it's best. First, I need to give you a little masterclass on masculine and feminine energy dynamics in a relationship and how this polarity will give you your dream relationship. So here we have our respective energies. We have feminine energy and we have masculine energy. When they're upright like this and there's that gap in between, that means that both energies are in their respective zones. There's great polarity happening here right in the center between these energies energies is just a ball of passion, energy, attraction, intimacy, and everything great and juicy that we want in a relationship. Now, this polarity is usually very stable in the beginning stages of dating, but what happens when a woman starts forming feelings for a man and getting attached to him emotionally, she starts trying to close the distance between them because it feels unsafe for her. So what will happen is the masculine is here, the feminine is here. As she starts developing strong feelings for the man and attaching emotionally, she starts to feel insecure and she starts leaning forward. She she starts trying to close the gap due to insecurity. This is all wounded feminine energy. And when this gap starts to close, the masculine is going to feel very, very suffocated and have no other option other than to lean back. So now he's leaning back. She's like this. All she wants to do is keep leaning forward. The more he leans back, the more the wounded feminine wants to come closer. The feminine is starting to beg and to nag and convince this masculine, where did you go? Why aren't you doing all the things you used to do for me? I thought you loved me. How can you treat me this way? And so, okay, he listens a little bit and he starts to come up a little bit. He's trying to come up for air, okay? And he's trying to do those masculine things that he has a deep innate desire to do. So he's trying to come up. He's trying to plan dates. He try he wants to do all those things. But now the wounded feminine is so attached to him and latched on. She has no ability to create space. He's trying to come up for air, but it's not happening. He's just met with constant resistance. So what does he end up doing? He ends up leaving. He ends up going somewhere else because now it's not 
fun. It's not playful. It's not light. There's no passion or intimacy. It's just nagging. It's just resistance. It's just constant begging and just insecurity that's surrounding the relationship. So in order for the feminine to come back up into her respective energy, she has to do the inner work. She has to start healing. She has to start centering herself and becoming grounded in her energy zone. She needs to create strong roots in her feminine energy so that the polarity doesn't really shift. She might go like this a little bit. He might go like this a little bit, but there's still so much room. The polarity is still happening. There's still such an energetic charge between these energies that it doesn't really affect anything. It's like, okay, bit of jealousy, but then she bounces right back because she has grounded her roots in her feminine energy and he has grounded his roots in his masculine energy. She can be her feminine goddess and he can be that masculine man, that provider, that protector. He wants to treat her like a queen and guess what? He has the space to do so. She's staying grounded in her feminine energy over here. She's good. She knows that masculine is coming toward her. You always want to be in your respective energy so that you can allow the other energy, the masculine energy, to do what it needs to do because you're doing what you need to do and just by doing that, this symbiotic relationship is blossoming and it feels good for both parties and we want to make sure that there's always that distance in between and not because we're trying to play a game but because that distance is what builds the love. It keeps the passion, the intimacy, the sexual energy going. It's that spark. It's that ball of fire in between these two energy fields. The further you are apart on your scale of feminine energy and masculine energy, the stronger the pull toward each other. The closer you are on this energetic scale, the less passion, the less intimacy, the less of the princess treatment and that beautiful dynamic of like, my man spoils me, he treats me, and I treat him like a king in return. But you want to be as far as you can on the scale. And it depends where you are in your feminine energy journey and where he is in his masculine energy journey. So that is just a visual representation of masculine and feminine energy at play. So the feminine gives in energy and the masculine gives in tangibility. What does that mean? A feminine woman doesn't need to come to the table with receipts about what she can provide monetarily. In a tangible sense, the feminine woman provides the energetic space for a man to breathe in, for a man to feel safe in, and for herself to feel safe in. So many feminine men are like, oh, what do you bring to the relationship? What do you bring to the relationship? They are not masculine men. A masculine man, high value man, knows exactly what a feminine woman brings to the table and knows that that is a case of gold bars right there. The masculine man understands the relevancy and also the potency of the energy that is being brought by a feminine woman because that energy literally upgrades him and his entire life just by being in a feminine woman's presence. So learning to accept that about yourself and embracing that part of your womanhood that doesn't need to be measured by metrics or anything tangible. It can literally just be that your inherent self, your core essence, is enough value to feed 15,000 lifetimes. You are the creator of life. Where do you think that you need to go looking for something tangible to say, this is what I bring to the table? You bring life force energy to the table, and just by being in your presence, you are completely transforming a man's life. Now, there's caveats to that because you have to do the work in order to get to that point where you are actually upgrading a man's life and not tearing it down because if you're not doing the inner work, if you feel like you're always jealous and you're reactive and you're overly emotional, you are going to downgrade a masculine man and he's actually not even going to be in your energetic realm. So it's important that you do that work so that you know with full certainty that I am upgrading this man's life by being in my presence and you do it with a sense of knowing, not entitlement, we're going to get to that, but you do it with a sense of knowing I look good, I talk good, I know what's going on inside, I exert that loving, warm, inviting feminine energy and this man is going to be so much better off in his life by bringing me around. In rooms, he is going to be more respected because he is with me. So with that being said, that is exactly how a feminine energy woman is in a relationship. She knows her worth. She knows what she does and she doesn't need to come with receipts with tangible things to be like, this is what I'm doing in this relationship. There's no proving energy here. She just knows, okay? She's good. And a masculine man feels confident and he feels good knowing that he is bringing all the tangibility. He's bringing the monetary value. The bare minimum is 
protector and provider. If a man cannot do those two things that are his basic primal instincts, we don't want to waste time on that man because we're out here preparing, doing the things that we need to do. And if he can't fulfill his basic instincts, that is not good material for being a husband or a father. We need a husband who is going to be a strong father. We're thinking generationally. This is not just for like, oh, high value man, I want to be spoiled and like get gifts. We are thinking for our children. Next, high value dating standards. You need to get some boundaries. The thing with boundaries is that you have to actually assert them when it's time. This is how women are out here living like a dream girl and being treated like one and being treated like a princess because they have boundaries that they actually follow. They don't just implement them silently and then when push comes to shove, they're kind of like, oh, I don't really know what to do. I don't know how to react. Should I enforce this boundary? Oh God, but if I enforce this boundary and he doesn't like it, then he might leave and I don't want that. So how do I go about this? This is why you're not getting princess treatment. This is why you're not getting treated like a dream girl because you're not the dream girl. Dream girls, princess treatment worthy girls are acting like princesses. If you expend this like energy of you will still have access to me regardless of how you treat me, you will always get the bare minimum. You might not be treating me the way that you want, but that's okay. I'll still let you access me. I'll be upset about it. I'll cry to my girlfriends, but I won't do anything about it. Do you think a man is going to go the route of I'm going to give her the world even though she's not demanding it? No, he's going to go the route of okay, she's accepting literally nothing from me. This is so easy. Like I'm going for this. That is the concept of entropy. The natural order of the universe is that disorder and chaos is easier. The harder route is order. It takes zero effort to treat you like shit, but it takes maximum effort to treat you like a princess. If you don't require more than the bare minimum, you will always get the bare minimum because it is the easier route for most men. And the caveat here is that high value men will not even entertain women who accept the bare minimum. They aren't even in the energetic realm of crossing each other's paths because a high value man knows what a high value woman is and how this woman is conducting her own life for herself. If you don't have standards or boundaries and you're constantly letting men walk over just putting a toe over the line of where they think that they can treat you and you're allowing that toe to cross the toe is going to cross both feet are going to be over the line because you aren't doing anything to enforce anything else think of your boundaries as like a laser fence you know those red fence lights and everything and like if you cross it in these action movies you get hurt or something happens like an alarm goes off that is what your boundary needs to be like he can't see them you're not saying anything you just have them in place and when he crosses one an alarm goes off and you know what to do next. Your reactions are in place. It's a very finite detail of dating, but it's very critical to have in place. And this is what it is. You need to know exactly how you are going to react with big things and with little things. And by knowing these reactions, minor, major, you will know exactly how to conduct yourself when these boundaries, when these standards are crossed. I'm doing a video next week on feminine energy communication. So subscribe so you can watch that. But I'm going to explain all of this in there and how you're going to communicate all this stuff but like I said you want to have those red light boundaries around you that nobody else can see but once they get crossed alarms go off and then you conduct yourself accordingly based on your already predetermined reactions to specific actions until you don't require a man to be a man in your presence he won't he has to be aware just by your energy that there is no other option so either step up or I'm gone your mantra should be you can only access me if you come with the correct behavior because I will go somewhere else and find it where I don't have to nag, where I don't have to beg, where I don't have to plead and convince you that I am worth it. And that brings me to say, stop treating men like toddlers. You need to start loving men from a place of, I love him so much that I know and believe that he is capable. I love him so much that I know he's capable of planning dates. He's capable of consistency. He's capable of providing for me. He's capable of taking care of me. And because I know he is capable, when he doesn't do it, I know that he is choosing not to do it. Stop loving men in a way that diminishes their capabilities because they are very capable. And if you're not experiencing the benefits of this man, then he's intentionally withholding and you need to move on. The royal mindset is this. If a man sees you buying flowers for yourself, taking yourself out on sexy, luxurious dates, treating yourself to a nice bag, he's gonna think one of two things. The first is, damn, I can't compete with her level of self-love. I'm out. It's too much. Or he's gonna say, 
damn. Look at the way she's treating herself. She is worth it. Look at how she's pouring into herself. I want to also treat her like the way she treats herself like a princess. The rule of thumb is you are either going to be too high maintenance for a man who was never going to be able to give you what you want, or you're going to be just the right amount for the man who has been waiting for a woman like you his entire life. These are the prerequisites for him. These are the things that he needs to have before you even consider dating him. And if he doesn't have 90% of these things, chances are he will never be able to step into the role of a masculine provider who finds joy and purpose in treating a woman. The first thing is that he has to be able to take away the mental load. What does this mean? It doesn't mean that we only want gifts and we want to be spoiled and we want all that luxurious. We love that. That's great. However, when a man can take care of the mental stuff, do all the thinking for you, chef's kiss, game changer, okay? For example, if you're going on a flight, you don't even have to think or worry or even have a thought in your mind where the passports are, is the Uber called, who's driving us to the airport, what terminal are we in? This man knows everything. All you have to do is roll out of bed, do whatever you gotta do, look cute, and just hop in that car. You don't have to worry about anything. This is how you truly will live a stress-free life in a relationship. When you are with a man who understands that taking off a mental load for a woman literally takes her body out of survival mode. So when you don't have to think about anything, it's just done for you. That is what men mean when they're taking care of a woman. It doesn't mean that you lose your autonomy. It just means you get to live a stress-free life. Can I constantly think thoughts and be logical and analytical and order Ubers and figure out what terminal I'm in? Absolutely, I can. Does it mean that I want to? No. If this man is going to offer, if that man's going to offer, whoever is going to offer, I'm going to take it because I am trying to live my life in the path of least resistance. So that needs to be the number one prerequisite for you when you're dating for this kind of relationship dynamic. The second one is he hears when you communicate something. So he is listening to you when you communicate and then he's taking action on the conversation. He isn't just hearing you and being like, yeah, baby, don't worry. Like, I'm going to correct my behavior. Don't worry. I got it. And then you don't see any change or worse. He corrects it for a week and then he goes back to normal and it's like, okay, what the heck? And that brings me to say for number three, his actions and words are aligned. The thing with men, playboy men, low effort, low value men is they know how women communicate. They have a handbook on this, okay? They players. They know that women fall in love with words and we connect through words. So what do they do? They will use their words to enchant you and charm you and you think you are getting the world and this man is your soulmate and he is the best you've ever had. But that is not the type of man you need to be going for. You need to be going for a man that speaks those good things to you 100% but also backs it with actions. His actions are so aligned with his words that you know that when he says something, it's the truth. It's gospel because he is following through on that action. Action is always going to be the telltale sign of the caliber of this man because men are action oriented. They're doers. They don't use feminine expression through words to communicate and to connect. It's just not what they do. A man connects through action, through doing things, okay? So when he's not doing things for you, but he's talking all this good stuff and it sounds so good and you're like, ooh, tell me more, all in this embrace, but then you're looking around and it's not happening. It's because he's just talking, talking, talking to you. He's not actually going to do any of these things. He's no follow through, zero. So this man got to go. So those are the prerequisites for him. What are the prerequisites for you? It's only a couple, okay? And then we're going to get into where I'm going to check you. But first, you need to learn how to appreciate a man. And not in the sense of, oh, thank you so much. Like, you took me out for dinner. But noticing, like, the subtleties and the nuances and the caveats of this specific action. If he took you to a really nice restaurant and it just happened to be a restaurant that you met mentioned like months ago and he got your favorite wine or he did whatever, notice those things and pick up on those. When you notice the smaller things, it helps make it a continued action because you've taken the time to actually know the details of the effort that he went through to make that happen for you. You're not just noticing the general vague niceness of it. It's the kind of appreciation a man is looking for. What do you need to stop doing? Okay, let's talk. What do you need to stop doing? You need to know what he does not need in a relationship for him to fall in love with you. Do not get triggered and sound off in the comments saying that men need to take the time to get to know women, blah, 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 baby girl. You only feel this way because you're not attracting the right men. The right men will take the time to do exactly what you're doing right now, which is watching videos, trying to understand men, how they think, because that is the only way you are going to enter a healthy relationship dynamic by taking the time to understand 
understand how a man works and how he thinks. And the right men are also doing the same for you. The right men will also be taking the time right now to understand women so that they can prepare for their future wife, just as you are right now preparing for your future husband. There is so much power in the preparation phase that so many women overlook. They feel like they just want this high value man who is masculine, who gives her the world, who treats her like a princess, but they're not doing anything in preparation to be the woman who that man wants to be that for. You can't be the woman who is like, oh, I don't care. Nope, I don't care. Mm, no, I don't care. It's all you. It's all you, 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 you. Mm -mm -mm. That's not going to get you anywhere. That's all coming from hurt, which I'm going to get into later. And when you're meeting yourself at that level in preparation and you're meeting your husband there, there's no other option other than to attract a man who is on the same wavelength. It's all energy. For this is the biggest myth, and I'm about to bust it. Being good to him isn't the cheat code. It's not what you do for a man that makes him fall in love. This is where the resentment cycle starts, okay? So a woman has this perception, this belief, don't know where it came from, but she has this belief that the more she does for a man, the more he's going to value her, the more he's going to fall in love with her, the more he's going to see her as like, damn, this is my ride or die, she's taking care of me. It does the opposite. When you are doing all of that and you don't get the positive feedback that you're looking for, the resentment starts to build and you start saying, I'm doing all these things for you and you can't even take me out to dinner? He is not giving to you what you are giving to him and this is bothering you, but you are doing it with the intention for manipulation almost. Like you are doing it because you think this is how he's going to fall in love with you. You might have that sweetness at the beginning, like I'm doing it because I love him, but as this goes on and you're doing everything to please him and you start noticing that he's not giving you the same energy back, you start doing it with resentment you're still going to please him and bend over backwards for him but you're doing it now with resentful energy hoping that one day it just clicks like oh my god this girl is doing everything for me I'm gonna give a little bit back to her it doesn't happen because you've already started the cycle you've already taught him that you are going to do everything for him he doesn't have to do anything for you this is the exact behavior that will make you a doormat a man who sees a woman that is willing to sacrifice her entire being her entire life her soul her energy into him into pleasing him will automatically, subconsciously, consciously place her in category C. Category C is convenience. She's great. She's cool. She's convenient. She's not my dream girl. She's good for right now. What makes a man actually fall in love is how you make him feel feel. Your ability to get a man into his feeling state and shift him from up here and into here, into his body. Because men are not naturally tapped into their bodies. Women have this ability. Men are very analytical, very logical. So for you to get him from here to here and experience something that he doesn't get to experience on his own makes you invaluable. You have to make him feel good in relation to you. Number two, you gotta stop doing. Thinking all men are trash. Rewire your beliefs around men. Why do you think they all suck? Why do you think they're all trash? You want a good man. You want your dream man, but yet you think all men suck. You can't want an amazing man who treats you like a queen, but think none are out there and none exist. You have to come to terms with this contradiction. Some women will do anything but take accountability. There's a quote by Dan Nielsen that says, don't get mad at a clown for acting like a clown when you are the one continuously going back to the circus. You might think and believe to your bones that you are treating yourself like a queen. You're giving yourself all the love. You've done the inner work. It's like, I am so good on my own. I love being on my own. I've got all this self-love. I love myself, but men are still dogging you out. It's because some part of you is still attracting that kind of man, that kind of behavior. You have to investigate that. This is a very extensive topic that I am obsessed with. So if you liked this video and you want to hear more and learn more on this topic, comment and like this video for a part two. If you want to take your learning on this topic, topic further than just this video. I have an entire course on this called the Feminine Dating Academy linked in the description box. The next step is to develop your high value dating standards. So go watch this video next.